Thank you. We say it is good. The problem of sexual abuse within the Catholic Church is not has, has not been solved because this investigation between the police and the Catholic Church is not working, and because of this, still victims suffering, and because and there's possibility that another act in this sense is occurring at, 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 from now on. And we say by taking this proposal, we can actually victim move forward by knowing the answer of the root cause of this problem. Also understand the root cause of the structural problem of the Catholic Church. And by doing this, we say uh, we can uh, solve this problem and move forward. So that's why we propose this motion today. So basically, I will talk about two things in my speech. First of all, why in Cedesco this structural problem is still there, and why this investigation between police, police and this Catholic Church is not working enough to solve the problem. And second of all, I will explain that how after taking this proposal, this Truth and Reconciliation Commission has, a uni has unique, unique, in uniqueness to solve this problem because they are neutral, that they are, our aim is to make the peace and they will have fair discussion between victims and this Catholic Church which can find the root cause and answer and solve the problem. That's what I'm going to explain. So first of all, the de definition. So this house is the United Nations because we think the United Nations has a neutral actor, is a uni neutral actor in society. And the Truth and Reconciliation Commission is that well defined as a, in the border that you guys maybe know no. that is like we will like they will for example have a discussion, fair discussion between the Catholic Church and victim so that they may they solve the problem and move forward. And to investigate sexual abuse within the Catholic Church is that you guys know that there are, we were having had an incident that some some priests abused children in the church and the higher people hide hide them and move move for another place and the accidents but could not solve and still the victim is suffering in his school because they could not find the answer. So that's the definition. So move on to my first point. Why in the school the problem cannot be solved? We say in Cisco, um first of all, there is a structural problem, right, in the Catholic Church that um like like the problem what the problem the problem we have is that the higher level people like Pope uh like uh has power and they uh, pre protect these like uh criminals uh, who are like um uh, protect these priests by from these crimes, right? So there are so many like structural problems in this situation. Data, please. So we say, well, yes, they had to accident and police investigated, right? However, it didn't work enough. Why is that? First of all, we say this. First of all, because the scale was really big, right? This program was occurring in, in the entire the, um, the U.S. and these local polices could not uh, do enough, right? Second of all, is that they. Uh, the police, police and Catholic, Catholic Church were feeling kind of against until to the uh, policies, right? First of all, because they will give us like punishments, right? The guard who are so look like strong, maybe not, but like they were uniform and like they were coming to you and ask the question and give them punishments, right? Or because the state has a that this Catholic just think that um, these states will deprive of us from like religious freedom and because they will then prosecute us and think and stuff like that. And and we say um policy is only acting for the victim, right? We say well I, I think it's good. However, for the Catholic just people, but they think that they don't they don't they, they will actually prioritize the only victims and Catholic Church didn't really tackle with the policies, right? So, because of these things, the Catholic Church and between the relationship between Catholic Church and policies is not good that this Catholic Church rejects our investigation from the police, right? Sorry. So we say that's why investigation oh. is not working enough. And I want to take Poi from closing. Okay, so you're saying that the Catholic Church didn't, um, didn't cooperate with the police because there was no benefit. So why will they cooperate in your paradigm? What's the benefit for okay. the Okay, yeah. so that's what I'm going to explain after taking this proposal. But before that, let's continue my service goal analysis. So because of this, the root cause is not has been solved. Yes, police find some criminals and give them punishment. However, they, we, we, that, yeah, we solve some problem. However, they could not solve the root cause. That they could not solve the structural problem of the Catholic Church. And because of this, actually, we still still cannot find the truth about who did this crime or 
stuff like that, and still have the possibility that this another criminal will another another priest uh, will do same crime to to this their children, etc. Because the stru structural problem has not been solved. Because of this, victims are still suffering, and they don't know the answer, but they're still suffering. And that's why we say the problem is serious. But after taking this proposal, we say the situation will be much better. Because the uni let me analyze the uh, 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 uniqueness of truth and recons recons counseling commission. So this is something like neutral, right? So they the aim of them is make peace and find the truth so that everybody can move forward, right? So they have incentive to work on because otherwise they lose power. If they could not solve the thing, they lose the power, they lose the recognition. So they have enough incentive to move forward and work on. And actually, that's what they did. I'm sorry. That's what they did in Rwanda, right? In Rwanda, they made, they use uh, this this commission internally, and and because because it's not police, they are the neutral one that that provide a discussion space between the both sides mutually, so that both sides can talk, both sides can move forward and solve the problem, right? We say because of this uniqueness, we say. The, this commission is very unique actor to solve the problem. And we say Catholic Church will not reject these things because, one, because they are fair, right? They are not the one who only care about the victim. They also care about the Catholic Church. And also Catholic Church, one of the, so some members of the Catholic Church want to solve this problem. And also if they reject it, they also lose the power or recognition from society. They are rejecting now this neutral, neutral commission. Right? So we say they will accept the thing. And what's going to happen is that we will be able to, because of more discussion, more neutrally discussion, we can find the root code, which is, might be hierarchy, or which is, might be other things. So because of this, we can find the truth by taking the that we can solve the root code, so that we can know the answer of this root code problem, so that we will not have any victim anymore, or victim will be much better by knowing the answer. So for all this, we are extremely proud to propose. Thank you. Thanks, speaker for his remarks. Now I invite Neil Nocturne to open up your case within seven minutes here. <laughs> Today. 
First thing I'm going to talk about, which is better for victims, uh, which is definitely the not having our, our, uh, TRC. And secondly, I'm going to explain uh, the huge harm will occur if you establish TRC. And thirdly, I'm going to talk about the talk about that the religion should not be the reason for making the law or etc. in, in the criminal justice system. First argument, which is better for victims? Definitely not having TRC is better. We believe the situation which the situation which victims can choose to sue or can choose not to sue is much better just like status quo. We believe we should give chance to choose chance to choose uh, whether to sue or not to these yeah. victims. No thank you. Uh, why is that? We have two reasons. Firstly, if we give the victims right to choose, then we have we will have two scenarios. First, the victim will sue. Second, the victim don't sue. Why these people? Uh, why some people don't sue? Because they don't. Wh why these people uh, don't want to sue? Because they. I will explain for you. Because they want to keep their privacy, or they want to keep their social honor, their social status. Because they want to confide these um, shameful things, we, they want to keep it secret. They, some people think that, and yeah, yeah. and um, or there are some other types of people like who want to uh, who want to keep it secret because they think uh, suing priests is very sacrilegious. Like uh, the very uh, core core believer thinks that it is very wrong to sue the priests because um, they are uh, believing. That, uh, they have the yeah. no, thank you. They have the beliefs. So um, these people don't think so. Don't want to believe. Uh, don't, don't want to see. And also, uh, we have um, other type like people who want to sue. It's okay. <coughs> the, uh, pe pe um, these people think it's okay. With these people are okay with sacrificing social status. They rather want to uh, sue priests. Because they uh, want to, they want to get compensation, emotional compensation, like something like that. But um, this is happening, actually happening under status quo. So the status quo is actually pre protecting their rights, both people's rights. And uh, another scenario, uh, no, the, the no. second point, second reason for one or four segment is that Catholic itself is taking the action uh, under status quo. Like Pope, if Pope knows about this um, this crime, uh, crime, then the Pope will anathematize these priests or the um, excommunicate. Oh, no, thank you. So the status quo is working under the status quo. So we think uh, without TRC, we can achieve the, uh, the better scenario, which is, which keeps which is kept under the system. Second, second argument: huge harm if you uh, establish TRC. Two significant two significant harms. Firstly, people won't be able to control their privacy. Now, why is that? Because they will be forced to be investigated. Why is this bad? Because the stigmatization will occur. Like if you uh, if you uh, if you sue, then people will know that in this district, in this country, in this distri district, this boy was raped in by this priest in this church, like that. So the stigmatization will occur, which some people obviously don't want to don't want to occur. Yeah, yeah. And also. Uh, so we believe it's uh, rather bad for entire religion and for victims as well. And secondly, the mental harm will occur. In the process of investigation, these victims are forced to um, to remember, to recall these um, shameful uh, shameful crimes. Like some people obviously don't want yeah, to remember them. No, thank you. And um, but they are forcingly, they, they are forced to remember these things. So in that case, we are violating their rights. Well, they are not protecting their rights. So uh, we believe this is no thank you. We believe this is so harmful. And third argument is that we believe religion should not be the reason for making the law, etc., in criminal justice system. Why is it? We have three points here. Firstly, it's the very nature of religion. The religion is very subjective. So believers believe these religions. Like religion can make people think everything. Can people? Can, religion can make people think in particular way. Like they can make people to think. Everything will be forgiven if only you confess or admit if you take this one. So uh, yeah, that's yeah. very harmful. And secondly, religious leader will lose incentive to prevent crimes. Why is that? Because they will be forgiven uh, if you make this law by the, this uh, reason. And so they they don't want they, they don't have the incentive to prevent these crimes. So child molestation done by priests will never disappear, which is very harmful. And thirdly, religion uh, is based on one body. So there is no consensus. There's no agreements. So 
um, people who don't have that relation towards those people is very dogmatic and it is very subjective, which is very harmful if you set the, the law based on that one value. So that's why the law shouldn't be shouldn't be based on one value. And so um, because we believe that we, uh, victims should have the choice, cho right to choose, and because we believe that religion should not be the reason to make the, the, the law, for these reasons, we are very proud to propose. Thank you. Thanks, Peter, for your remarks. We continue with the government bench. I call upon Deputy Prime Minister.
hides under the banner of state and religion and the interference of state. And they say we need our freedom of religion. And so when the police force that is the United States police force comes in, they can easily say, no, back off, you're hurting in our rights. And so that's why they can hide. However, with our plan and the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of the United Nations, they don't have that anymore. This is a global task force that is taking them to task. It's not one country that's trying to intervene in this freedom of religion. And so that's not an issue. And so then, let's talk more about why they will necessarily go into this proposal. So the Catholic Church, let's be honest people, is really on thin ice at this point. Not only have they had this pedophilia scandal, which they have been trying to skirt away from, they've also been having lots of other issues with the international community, such as their recent banking finance, where it was found out that some other members were taking money, and there was, I'm not sure the whole details, but there was laundering, and it was very bad. And so the international community has already become very wary of the Catholic Church. And under the status quo, the Catholic Church does have privileges from the international community. The Vatican has a place in the UN, and they are allowed to um, operate in many countries, and they are given tax breaks. But we think if they take this final action and refuse this um, mutual, neutral Truth and Reconciliation Commission from the UN, that will be this the parable straw that breaks the camel's back, and the international community will turn their backs on them once and for all and make them very difficult. Now, the Catholic Church is a very old institution and not as powerful as it once was, but it still maintains some power. It's not going to want to completely lose all of that power, and so that's why we think they have the incentive to do that. But on top of that, we do think the Catholic Church wants to solve this problem because, again, this whole issue of pedophilia has nothing to do with their values. However, because they feel like they are being threatened and they are having information forcefully extracted by them from police with warrants, they are wary about joining in this process. But the uniqueness of a Truth and Reconciliation Commission is everyone comes together and it's voluntary. We say what we did, you say what we did. Yes, some people are going to be arrested, but we think the Catholic Church is going to be happy to get rid of those people once and for all. And and if they can confront this and they can get all the information out in the problem, that will help eliminate the structural issues. Not only will we find the priests who are actually guilty of this, we will be able to more clearly pinpoint the priests in the hierarchy who are allowing this to happen by moving them around and not dealing with this problem to begin with. Therefore, you have the structural issues within the Catholic Church cleared up. You're not going to have the pedophile priests, or if you do, you will actually have priests who will do something about it instead of just trying to hide the problem. Therefore, we're going to get recomposition for the victims who will be able to address the truth of what happened to them and finally see some form of justice, which they're not getting under the status quo, because their lawsuits and nothing are moving anywhere. And we will also make sure there are no more victims in the future because the Catholic Church will not have the problems that are plaguing it today. Thank you. I will continue an option to close an open half within seven minutes. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, ladies and gentlemen. There's a structural problem of sexual abuse of children all around the world. The fact is, their proposal, TLC, will just exacerbate the situation. The more number of child abuse after taking proposal, absolutely no incentive for priests to stop committing crimes. If they are given the religious immunity to flee or to escape from the punishment of retribution, ladies and gentlemen, consequentially, we oppose the motion. Some rebuttals. Number one, <laughs> they say religious institu institution can reject the inst investigation by police. Is it true? Under the name of freedom of justice. If that's the problem, we can adjust that system, ladies and gentlemen. No, we taking their proposal, ladies and gentlemen. If that entrance barrier is the problem, we can change the judicial prudence to enforce the religious institution to accept the investigation by the police, not taking their proposal, which dim diminish the incentive of priests not to commit crimes, ladies and gentlemen. Why that's a unique solution in the very space? Yeah. No, thank you. I will take later. Um, maybe closing. <laughs> Even in the status quo, priests 
are confessing truth if they are sued by victims, ladies and gentlemen. Why? Because Pope can pressurize those people to confess the truth. Pope can excommunicate or anathematize or what you call defrock those priests if they engage malfeasance or corruptive activities, ladies and gentlemen. Because of this unique religious pressure uh, uh, imposed by the Pope, even in the current paradigm, uh, priests uh, confess the truth if they are sued by victims. We have already seen some precedents, ladies and gentlemen, in which priests are sued by believers, ladies and gentlemen. Therefore, even in the status quo, if they want to sue those people, they can sue, ladies and gentlemen. And we, we have I guess, precedents in which like, trials are going on. This means that there were the plethora of evidence gathered by police, even in the status quo. We don't see any unique necessity of taking their proposal. Sir. Number three, the uniqueness of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission is somehow it's very neutral because it's conducted by UN. Okay, if the United States is the agent, it's not neutral. If the UN is agent, it's neutral. It's very dubious, ladies and gentlemen. What if the like, UN nation includes the Muslim countries or Arabic countries, ladies and gentlemen? What if the staff, or staff of investigators include those Muslim people or the countries who do not believe Catholic, Catholic or Christianity, ladies and gentlemen? In this way, still UN can be perceived as biased actor, ladies and gentlemen. There's no particular discrepancy between the US government and the United Nations in this regard. What I mean content from this side of the house is their proposal that we just exacerbate the problem or aggravate the problem of child abuse, ladies and gentlemen. What their proposal does, what their proposal does, their proposal is going to give religious immunity or privilege the religious leader or priest not to be punished, ladies and gentlemen. Even in the status quo, they are punished and given the retribution if victims want and if victims sue those people, right? Are, or another scenario is if the victims sue or try to uh, try to make action to sue those priests, that information might you know uh, reach to the Pope, and the Pope can excommunicate those uh, people or defrock those priests, ladies and gentlemen. Therefore, be the status quo is fair in us in terms of compensation and retribution. Sorry. What we have to under their paradigm, ladies and gentlemen. Please imagine the situation. You are priest, you are pedophilia, I don't think so. If you commit crimes or <laughs> abuse children, then just by confessing what you did to that person, just by confessing your sexual practice with children, you, are, you will be able to escape from any kind of a punishment, any kind of retribution, ladies and gentlemen. At the same time, the privacy of victims will be publicized or disclosed to the public, ladies and gentlemen. What's the incentive for the priests not to commit crimes under your paradigm, ladies and gentlemen? Maybe the issue here is the characterization of a priest. What kind of priest we are talking about, right? If the priests are the people who Sir. care the honor or social status and those genuine faiths, those people have do not commit crimes in the first place, ladies and gentlemen, even under the current paradigm. If those priests have genuine human sense of kindness, those On people do point. not commit crimes in the first place, ladies and gentlemen. Therefore, the targets we are talking about today is the priests who, do, who have no like, hesitation to betray the law, to betray the genuine humanity, ladies and gentlemen. Those kinds of priests which have specific personality will still continue to abuse children, ladies and gentlemen. Especially in the paradigm where there is no possible legal consequence, ladies Possible legal, there will be no legal punishment for those people. What? There will be absolutely no incentive for those people not to commit crimes, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, yeah. This is rather harmful for the victims, too, ladies and gentlemen. The premise Sir. is for the victims, it's very free to attend the TRC or not, victims and accused, and even under their brother. Okay, if victims are brave enough, they have already sued priests in the state of school, ladies and gentlemen. If the victims have that kind of like a willingness, to fight against the Catholic Church, they have already sued or uh, the, make, in, in, uh, make a prosecution in the first place in the, under our problem, ladies and gentlemen. Therefore, their proposal doesn't work, ladies and gentlemen. Victims, if victims do not want their privacy information to be like spread, to be disseminated to the public, they are not going to attend the TLC. Therefore, your proposal is not likely to be successful as you described in this way. No, thank you, Nano. No, sorry. <laughs> Moving on to the comparison. Why this is important, this uh, argument is important, exacerbation of the problem. First of all, the role of Truth and Reconciliation Committee is to facilitate reconciliation between priests and believers and other victims. This is just counterproductive in this respect, ladies and gentlemen. The outcome of the proposal is diametrically opposite Last to the fundamental aim of TLC I will take you now. Okay, so you contradicted yourself.
yourself. You said that these priests can just confess and then everything will be okay, but then you said the Pope is actually under the status quo, actively excommunicating these people. So if punishment is occurring under your paradigm, which is it? Are they being punished or are they not? And in our paradigm, people are still punished. Thank okay. you. Okay. <laughs> so if victims sue those uh, like priests, that information will reach the Pope and they can't excommunicate. Well, he can anathematize or uh, defrog those priests, ladies and gentlemen. This is, I don't think this is a contradictory. Moving on, why this argument is important, ladies and gentlemen? The consensus of this fact is we want to like decrease the number of victims, right? They want that goal, right? But the outcome is more number of victims, which is better for victims. Obviously, our uh, paradigm is much better in this respect, ladies and gentlemen. Moreover, the retribution or punishment should be given to those who commit crimes. This is a principle for any circumstance, for any person. Just because you are the member or a priest of a religious community, or religiosity should not be the ground to make the exempt, exemption or the exception in a justice system, ladies and gentlemen. So for all these reasons, we are very proud to oppose the TLC. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker, for his remarks. Now, in November, we're going to open the closing half within seven minutes. Dogmatic dogma, there's no pro, uh, solution after reading this time. Of course, we agree with that. We say there's a dogma rooted in the exclusive dogmatic of the uh, religion of not allowing priests to get married with anyone. They say, uh, we, we say those members of the community automatically and exclusively believe this kind of idea and continue believing those idea. We say, after we take this one, we can have health discussion within the community by knowing the reality, by knowing the truth of the truth by TRC, and have a health discussion about those kind of things. Therefore, we're very proud to oppose this motion. First, I want to engage with the uh, law about the first way she has said the Pope can impose real pressure on priests, therefore there's a problem in the status quo. We say even if those, for example, priests come to the, the court, because the punishment is based on the enforcement, not the incentive of those priests. Those priests in the past have no incentive to reflect themselves, or community members have no incentive to reflect themselves after uh, uh, as I explain later. So scan what he, she has he has said, because big firms will not attend uh, attend to the TRC, there, therefore there's any, any solution. We think that doesn't attack the unique of TRC, because in TRC what we know is not about names of the people, not names of the victims, or location of the victims, but the truth. We say, without knowing those names or faces of those victims, we can know the truth of the, by introducing security, for example, uh, for example, the, uh, sheltering in those kind of courts, so those in TRC. Therefore, in terms of those kind of things, we don't really think we can uh, come to TRC. So, other reputation can be included in my speech. So first of all, I'm talk about how discussion can occur. We say, because the root cause is dogmatic, dogmatic idea of those kind of things, we say we want to have more this healthy discussion after we get this plan. So first of all, I want to talk about internal discussion, second of all, I want to talk about internal discussion. So first of all, internal discussion. We say in the status quo, because there's a dogma, an exclusive dogma, a dogmatic idea, we say in the status quo, those kind of things is not criticized inside the community, when they did not discuss inside the community. Why is that? Because they did not unjustify, actively unjustify, the sexual abuses in the past years. Because those sexual abuses is based on the dogma, exclusive dogma. If they try to actively oppose those sexual, uh, sexual abuses, they have to actively propose some uh, solution for the prevention of those kind of crimes. That has to be something that is opposing their identity, the opposing their dogmatic idea. Therefore, even though in the even though they have some slight about, slight doubt about those kind of dogma, because they do not have any experiences of facing, facing to, uh, facing to the, for example, crime, crime faces of the victims, or for example, how, what kind of feeling will the victim have in the past years, those power of dogma can override those kind of that slight doubt about those kind of dogmatic. Moreover, we say, because there's a community peer pressure in the status quo in this community, those community can enforce those ideas, implant those ideas on every single person in the community. We say, because they, they, 
inevitable experiences of facing with the victims, victims feeling, victims uh, crying baby, uh, crying faces. They, it, it is impossible for them to discuss the status quo. Certain place. So after we leave, what's going to happen is very clear. We think TROC is not about investigation. TROC is about communication and talking with each other. Because we have both parties in, in the TROC, and there's, uh, there's the very face-to-face -face communication in TROC. Because, for example, in case of South Africa, in, in the, in the, uh, after apartheid, what happened was that perpetrator and victim had a face-to-face -face communication and talk, talk about cases with each other. We said, for example, for, of course, at, at the first place, perpetrator tried to conceal the fact that it's not in favor of them. However, by seeing the crying faces of those kind of right, victims, victim feeling, or by face to face communication, they, uh, change, they change their minds and try to uh, reveal the fact. We say, because there's a chance for them to uh, face with those kind of face, uh, crying, crying faces, we think it's very really important. Yes? Okay. About the discussion, enthusiastic believer will continue to believe in dogmatic dogma anyway. Those who have rational willingness to ventilate the issue have already discussed those issues even in the current paradigm. We think those kind of enthusi enthusiasm believer can be minority and oppressed in those communities after we take Why is that? Because we say we have many audiences and many people in TRC, not only public traders or the victims. Those people Sorry. can face with the crying faces of those victims and think that it is wrong for us to support this dogmatic. We say in those kind of cases they can have healthy discussion in the inside community. But certainly alternative discussion. We say that let's go. Even though there are some groups or community which oppose this idea outside the Christian community, they have no reason to have a healthy discussion with the Catholic Church. Why is that? Because they think Catholic Church do not want to unjustify their sexual abuse in the past years, meaning they are, there is no they, they are not come, uh, uh, rational counterpart of discussion. In those cases, we say even though they have the idea opposing Catholic Church, opposing the idea of dogma, they have no discussion in the first place. After we expand by seeing that those of the perpetrator apologizing to the victims in those kind of situations. They can think uh, those charges are reflecting, those charges are remembering the facts, or those charges are unjustifying their, uh, their views. Therefore, in those, uh, the, from this perspective, we say we can have more heads up discussion. In this sense, opening up is wrong, because they're talking about those minority, the very enthusiastic people. We say, we say those kind of people can oppress and minoritize in the state after we expand, because we say majority will see, uh, we, we have the idea that it is room for them to allow priests to, for example, uh, like, rape children because their uh, dogma is not so absolute, dogma is not so right always, all the time. So what's important here is, why, why do we think it's necessary for us to have those discussions? We have two reasons to say so. First is about the uh, charges, second is about, oh, second is about charges. Uh, so, uh, no. So, what opening up has said, the churches should not be, should be immune from those kind of TRC. We don't think so. Because we say, for example, in case of South Africa, we do the TRC. Why is that? Because there were, those kind of oppression, those kind of slaughter, was based on the idea, based on the exclusive idea of the white people. We say, if the, those kind of things happen because of those ex exclusive idea, we want to have healthy discussion about the exclusive idea, and we want to correct, want to correct those kind of uh, ideas. Therefore, church is not, uh, is not for immune from those kind of things. Similarly, we said, especially when talking about those exclusive community, there's a region. As long as, for example, we allow those community to bind their members in the community, we want to, we, we want those members of the community to radically, uh, rationally decide, discuss about the idea, and rationally collect, collect their identity, rationally change their identity or like, way of lifestyle. We, we say, for example, the children who might be next generation in those community have to be implanted on the idea that it is very, it is absolute, uh, that those the command is absolute. We want those, we want those children to ra rationally. Think, those kind of things, the validity of those kind of dogmatic in the first place. Therefore, in order to conduct those healthy discussions, it's a very unique way for that for us to take. Therefore, I'm very proud of the proposition. Thank you. Thanks, Mika, for these remarks. Now, I'm sorry. Now, I'd like to invite member of the case for the seven minutes there. Why we can get truth, and that's what has come from the opening government, and how that's going to lead on to healthy discussions. So that's from Kua. Opening government citizen said crime is more important to punish them. But what's really been missing from this debate, and what's really necessary in this debate, 
is the simple question, which is more important in this case, and why even if we do tackle and accept that best case scenario, and even accept that we may be able to recognize all the truths that comes out, why we still need to prioritize the criminal, the punish, punishing of these priests. That is, and why we still need to respect criminal justice system as a fundamental pillar, and that's the kind of extension I'll let's bring to you from closing up. That's the, um, let's say, housekeeping that closing up will do in this round of debate. So, Firstly, before that though, we've got a couple or quite a lot of vague points from that side of the house. They say we're going, we are going to get truth and that is going to be great. That's all they have told us. They haven't really told us uniquely how by guessing the truth that people are going to change the way they feel or how people are going to think, change the way they think, how it's going to affect those victims in the first place. That kind of analysis has been missing from that side of the house. They just, said, they just ended by saying we can get the truth and that's going to be great. Another aspect they said is we can restructure the, the, um, was it the Catholic Church as a whole. The question is, how though? They say, we'll do it, we can do it. The fact is, their Prime Minister Tsubasa also said in a speech that it's this Pope who has the power and who already recognize that their priests are doing wrong and therefore they are hiding these priests under the doormat. That's the kind of analysis that that side of the House has already told us. If that is the case, Fair. number one, as I said in my POI to Tavasa, what is going to be the incentive for them to actually accept the um, TRC in the first place? And secondly, even if they do accept, as Dala said, the coming to this case is optional. If so, then why do these priests and popes are going to be willing to come in the first place when they do recognize that they are committing a crime, when they do recognize that they are that their priests are committing a crime, and they are actively hiding them away from the social media in the state quo. Why are these people going to have the incentives to come forward when they know that they're most likely going to be tied into it and going by their analysis when they know that they're going to be found out that they have committed a crime in the past and going to be punished? Where is the incentive for these people to come? We don't think there is any sort of incentive for these priests, for these um, Pope, to actually come when they do characterize these as being optional and when they have already told us that these people are actively hiding them away already in the state's quo. Chosen government came up and told us that they said on one hand that it, um, uh, it opposes, um, well, they said that these people have an idea and there is no active um, action to unjustify that crime inside the church in the first place because it opposes the dogmatic idea. It opposes what, the, what they believe as a religion as a whole. We think if that is the case, we don't think that they too will be willing to even come to the TRC in the first place. And moreover, if it is face-to-face -face communication, even if we do have face-to-face -face communication, if we are talking about people who have grown up learning these religions, if we are talking about people who have been, you know, baptized in this religion in the first place, then why would they simply be able to get rid of their dogmatic value and say, oh, maybe that's right, oh, maybe I'm wrong, oh, okay, you're right. Why would they be stupid? be able to be that simple enough to change. That was the sort of analysis that was coming from Cuba, and I think that's not good enough to make sure that we can have that kind of communication. And without that point standing, then we don't think it's going to lead to the healthy discussions and all of that which he then, on, he then went on to talk about. So, firstly, why in this, even if we Before do... That. Yeah, go on. Okay, so you said we gave no reasoning for why the Catholic Church would participate. I'm sorry you weren't listening to my speech, but I told you how under the status quo they're already facing a massive pressure. If they don't have the banner of freedom of religion that they do in individual yes. states to hide behind, go, 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 that's why go. they will engage. So please answer our analysis. If they're already under the so severe pressure that you're talking about, then why aren't they turning over right now? That pressure isn't necessary. That pressure isn't strong enough. That's why the state is wrong. That's why it's wrong. That's why that pressure cannot be used as an analysis to make a change. That's why your change of the church in the first place, when it is depending on your analysis of social pressure being strong enough, when we can prove to you and when I've proven to you that that pressure is not strong enough in the state's growth, then your case simply falls. But even if we were to tackle their best case scenario and say everything is going to work out, we're going to get the truth and we're going to be happy with that, the question still remains. Why does that override the importance of criminal justice system that we have as a fundamental pillar in our society in the first place? 
we think that criminal justice system is about retribution, rehabilitation, deterrence, safety, all that sort of thing that I learned in AEA last year from Tim Sun, right? You know, all the things that opening up the same. But the question is, they've already told us about it. So we think also adding to what opening autism has said, something they didn't say, is that it's something that's agreed upon by everyone in society. Not just the Catholic people, not just the atheists, not just the Muslim people. It's agreed upon by everyone in society. It's used and it's seen as being a fundamental pillar in our society, a structure which our society depends upon. We think it's wrong to see, when we do consider and recognize this criminal justice system to be the fundamental thing in our society, we don't understand why it can be just simply neglected just to incorporate another, incorporate a case which this criminal justice system cannot tackle just because it is incompetent in the first place. We think, as opening up season said, we're happy to change the system in the first place if that can lead to the systems. We don't necessarily think that our um, criminal justice system should simply be thrown away just because it does not work. We think that even if we were to get the best amount of truth from the pe from the TRCs, we still think that getting the best of that um, truth is still only going to benefit a few number of people who have been who have suffered from these crimes. And we think that when we do recognise that there is only going to be a limited number who benefit from the truth, but that society in general are the ones who are favouring criminal justice system and are supporting it as a whole. We think it's more important and there is more necessity to make sure that the criminal justice system stays standing and stays, um, you know, as a, um, as a, you know, a, what's the word, I don't know, as a good thing in our society, rather than having it being thrown away and as having the society being able to perceive it as being something that's not as important as they thought it would be. Closing opposition were the ones that compared all the classes in this debate and told you why it's necessary to keep the criminal justice system system and why it's more important to punish. That's why we're happy to oppose. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker Boris Morris. Now in my comment, we conclude the government's case within seven minutes. Go ahead. to the previous speaker's extension. Well, he said that CJS is very important, and by taking this motion, we're going to infringe this, um, uh, sorry, we're going to undermine this kind of importance of CJS because we're going to make an exception. Well, first response is, there are exceptions under the status quo. Like, in war situation, like my partner yeah, yeah. gave a good, very good example of the South Africa case, and these cases are uh, using this TRC, right? There's, uh, there are cases that are exceptions. And secondly, why is why this case is, can be a um, exception why is that? Because a unique. Uh, please think about the uh, the situation um, in which uh, si the situation in which the uh, child abuse, the child sexual abuse occur in um, Catholic churches. These ca children who are close to the priest are likely to be the followers of the believers of the uh, priests uh, of this kind of churches, right? That means that these, even if these uh, ch uh, these children are um, raped inside the churches, they are highly unlikely that they're going to sue this priest because they very admire, very much admire these kind of priests, right? So therefore, under the status quo, there's no incentive for the the uh, the uh, sorry the person who is being offended to sue these people, right? So therefore, we can say that there is a situation in uh, this situation under the status quo is that people do not sue in the first place, right? Because investigation is something that is only done after um, this kind of suing or prosecuting occur. That means that because there is no suing in the first place, because of this kind of unique context, we uh, we should provide them with an opportunity to actually face the reality and come things to at the surface. They talked about the importance of CJAs, but we believe the most important thing in the CJ is to actually reveal what has actually the truth, yeah. revealing, revealing, revealing in the truth is the most important thing. And because of the, you know, the, the because under the status quo, there is no revealing of truth because of the exclusive exclusiveness of the uh, Catholic Church and because of the unique context that I've explained, we are actually under the status quo is the situation in which the CJS pro, uh, pro main purpose is being undermined and therefore we should take this motion now before moving on to the classes. Yes, opening. Okay. Okay. Truth will come out.
but at the expense of the increasing number of child sexual abuse. Is it fair trade off? Okay. Uh, we would say, as my partner refuted already, child, uh, child uh, sorry, number of child abuse won't uh, increase. Uh, uh, won't in uh, sorry, uh, won't increase after a time. It will decrease, as I explained, because um, there will uh, because under a status quo, there's no opportunities for uh, there's no opportunity for these uh, people to actually sue in the first place. But after taking this time, there's going to be the case. So there are going to be a, a situation in which um, these uh, investigation occur. And moreover, um, I, as a, I would like to include the rest of your bottles in my um, um, in my clashes. Well, this debate can be broken down to two parts. First of all, is the is this problem of pedophile is going to be solved at the incentive level? A second uh, clash is about whether or not this uh, pedophile problem will be solved uh, at the dogmatic level. Well, firstly, at first clash, the Oregon government did the well job is saying that the investigation is not possible under uh, under uh, under the status quo uh, because police is not enough or something. And opening opposition said that uh, the the police will continue or uh, rather uh, rather uh, rather um, increase in the number of child abuse because they're, they can exempt it from the legal punishment, etc., etc. And I already rebutted to this point in um, in my rebuttal at the beginning. And also, um, my partner said that um, uh, my partner's clear contribution and the unique extension of coming from the closing government that even if the police is working under the status quo, the investigation is working under status quo, TRC is more effective. Why is that? Because the police situation, think about the police situation is in which you are forced to confess everything under fear. Fear, right? You're, you're under fear by, uh, for example, you're fearing the punishment, so therefore you're confessing, right? And they, uh, every explanation or every communication with the victim is done in a very legal and objective and a very dry way, but, but in the case of TRC, you're not under threat, or you're not, the, the, the person who is being prosecuted is not under threat, right? So you're actually, uh, you are actually confronting, uh, com going to have to confront with these emotional, for example, uh, faces of the, uh, for example, the, the victim, or you're going to be able to to freely communicate in a casual manner with this uh, victim, right? This means that uh, this is more likely to um, create the voluntarily will of these uh, vic uh, these offenders to confess yeah. your own self and confess what have actually happened. Therefore, this is going to rather make more opportunities for these uh, people to reflect upon what they what, what kind of how how harmful what you've actually done, and you're going to not fear, but from your own goodwill, these people can form all your own voluntary will. You can actually regret and stop you, yourself from doing this again. Well, second clash is about whether the pedophile incidents will be solved at the dogmatic level. The closing government's unique contribution is that, well, we've explained that status quo's problem, the pedophile problems, are coming from the exclusive uh, dogma that, for example, the, the priest cannot marry, so priests, uh, because priests cannot marry or have sexual intercourse with girls, so that uh, with women, so therefore they have with like a little boys or something. But after taking this spot, we can actually, because we can, um, okay, we can, we, we, by taking this motion, we can change this go dogma through, through healthy dis uh, discussion. Why is that? Well, the closing, op I'm sorry, closing opposition said that because the, the dogma is something that is unchangeable, therefore, this kind of uh, do dogma won't be changed. But we will say that the, these dogma will be able to change. Why is that? Because um, under a status quo, as I said, these uh, uh, these uh, priests have no opportunity to, for example, actually fa face the reality of what uh, they've actually done because of the uh, for the lack of opportunity of suing and, and these kind of things. And but after taking this path, because why these uh, priests have actually committed these kind of crimes? That's because they had so they couldn't stop their own sexual desire. Their momentary insanity is something that actually driven them to do such kind of things, right? But after taking this path, they uh, because <coughs> after taking this path, they can actually uh, become uh, sorry they I can actually see what I have, uh, they've actually done and they will be uh, uh, being more uh, calmer and therefore they <coughs> Uh, therefore, because they are Christians, right? They are taught to be good or to be good, do good things to other people, right? So by facing these uh, the crime victims or by facing these people, they will try to uh, they will, for example, uh, remember these kind of uh, the, the parables and they will try to express themselves. And moreover, because of the silent majority in this society, the silent majority of Christians will see that this all of what will see what is actually happening in the, in the Catholic Church, right? And these they see this reality of. Church. So this kind of neutral, um, <coughs> not conservative Christian people will try to, for example, doubt this kind of dogma. And then because the Christian uh, Catholic Church also want to collect followers, they will try to, for example, uh, make themselves look better by, through, for example, uh, uh, 
uh, through changing their own dogma. And from normal, all these reasons, we beg to propose them. Thanks to you for more remarks. Now I'm an option with the food and options case and this debate within seven minutes. Go ahead. When it is a structure that we depend upon, we don't think that um, 
first of all, when it doesn't even benefit, we don't think that on a practical level because it doesn't work, and also because it doesn't benefit the, um, it, on a principle level, too, it doesn't benefit anyone in this case. We don't think um, because of this reason that we should uh, go on with this plan. Yeah. And thirdly, no thank you, no thank you. Um, so it, are they, is it going to restructure church itself? Uh, we haven't heard no analysis on whether or not this is even going to happen or how it's going to come about in any way. When they're just saying, oh, truth, we'll find truth because people are going to start talking. They're not going to start to talk us in the first day. And you didn't tell us that if, if there is that structural problem in the first place, whether, whether if that's going to be placed... Uh, Shame, please engage. No, thank you. That's going to be uh, sold in, uh, in any way. So what was our burden? Our burden was to prove that it, was, it doesn't work. And the status quo um, is it is working uh, somehow. Uh, it's working to some extent that through the criminal justice system that we're able to prosecute individual priests for their individual crimes that are committed. That's the, that's the basis. That's the foundation that we work upon. If an act has, if a specific act has been committed by a specific person, then we go through the investigation, find out whether or not or how that person was involved in that crime and what act was actually committed. That's the criminal justice we work upon. We don't want to work with these vague ideas about the Catholic Church totally involved in this crime, and if they are, um, then, and then like, they need to tell us then, the, how you're going to tackle the problem in the first place. That point. I think that no, thank you, because sexual abuse is being done by uh, priests themselves. That we should be going into the experience. It's, to these individual priests and find out whether or not they've done that crime. That's the basis we work in, that's the basis we believe in. That's the basis that people would actually understand. People would be people would feel reconciliated in that way. The people, not just the victims, and thank you, not just the uh, the leaders of the Catholic Church. The people would understand that the crime was bad. People would understand that the crime was properly taken care of. That's what we want from society. No, thank you. And it's a social consensus because we have that foundation, because we expect that result from when a committed crime has been committed that's the way it should be no thank you on a principal level that they want the, whatever the, the entire government case what they're saying goes against that role in society no thank you and we think that it's more important to punish these individuals through the criminal justice system and we think that um, and and also going into the harms we think the, uh, there is that harm when um, well, firstly, because the problem is not going to be solved. As been continues to be saying by opening opposition, we've been telling you from closing opposition as well that people are not going to come forward. People are not. We're not solving the problem. We're just saying, oh, TRC is good because of the UN, because it's neutral, because um, because we think uh, because it's fair. But we haven't heard no analysis on whether or not people are going to come forward. They're not going to come. They're not. So the victims are still going to be there. What we need to do is to go into these individual cases instead of looking at looking away from these individual cases. We've what we're virtually doing, if we say that the structure is bad, or the whole problem, if we say that we look at the structure, we need to look into these individual cases. We're concerned, uh, because we believe in the criminal justice system, we're concerned with individual cases, individual acts, and only through this can we actually prosecute these people, only through this can we uh, execute the law as it should be, and only through this way can we uh, make people understand what the law is, and to uh, continue the values that have been sustained by society. For all these reasons, we oppose. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Morris. Now, Mr. Robert, thank you for your cooperation.